Paul McGuire Grimes, KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Shailene Callum, it is really great talking to both of you today. I really fell for the romantic nature of this whole movie. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for yeah. being yeah. Now, Shailene, we're used to seeing you in very contemporary stories. And here you're playing a woman from the 1960s. Your costumes were giving me Jackie Kennedy vibes. Was that part of the appeal? And what did you take away from learning about that era? Uh, it was definitely part of the appeal. I mean, I'd say the main appeal was wanting to work with Augustine Purcell because I just think she's super groovy and rad and an awesome chick. Uh, and then taking away from the 60s, I didn't know much about what um, the legal status the legal status that women held in 1960s, specifically in England. Mm. Um, and I just learned a lot about that. So I'd say that that added to my history of female uh, rights and women's rights. That's more. awesome. And Augustine, I love talking to her, by the way. She was great. She's so great. <laughs> yeah. Now, Callum, you have to, you know, you have to be that brooding, leading man type. Must be a rough role to take on. Now, were there other favorite on-screen leading men that you drew inspiration from? Yeah, you know what? I, 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 um, I, uh, um, I read one of Terence Stamp's autobiographies, and I listened to two, um, because he's got three, and uh, I think he actually has four. And I just sort of dived into that Michael Caine, Terence Stamp world, um, which really painted such a picture of the 60s for yeah. me. It was um, beautiful. You're Shailene, you're also a producer on the film. What made you want to get involved behind the scenes? So Felicity Jones was attached before I was, and she was an executive producer. And when I came on board, they were like, is this an opportunity that you would like to consider as well? And I absolutely wanted to. I love producing. I think that there's, there's so much... Um, there's so many times when small little decisions that producers make can make or break a film. And I, I think, you know, being, being in the room and having conversations with other creatives on the film is a beautiful way to protect the film. And I'm all about protecting the stories that we devote ourselves to. So uh, it was a great experience on this one. Good. Callum, do you have an interest in either writing or directing or producing as well? Yeah, definitely. Like Shay said, you know, if you can make the film better or, and, and find stories that you want to, either be in or tell or get other people to tell. Yeah, why not? Now, Shailene, do you have favorite on-screen couples that you were thinking about as you were making this? No, I was trying to only really think about us and think about the characters that we were portraying and and that storyline so as not to compare um, and confuse my brain with too many, you know, analytical anecdotes. But my favorite on-screen couples are definitely um, Johnny and Baby and Pretty Woman. <laughs> and I will say... Well, I have Paul and our stars over there too, because that was. And you got I Love Lucy, which yes. I love that. I love that. I have that exact, um, that exact one. It's a great box set. Oh, such Callum, a what were you going to say? No, just that the, those two movies were the ones that Shay and I watched. And oh we, we tried to perfect the, uh, the move. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Shay couldn't lift me. A little role reversal there. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting pinched by my dog here. Oh, what kind of dog is it? Uh, he's a hunter. Oh, look at you. It. Oh, I love it. Two of ours are upstairs right now, sleeping away, I'm sure. Uh, What's the last great book that both of you read? Oh, my God. I'm reading a book right now. Oh, it's not wrong. It's called Animal by this author, Lisa Tadeo, and it's so good. Fiction? Oh, my not God. It's so good. It's it's fiction. I, it's so, it's just, you got to read it. It's so okay. good. Okay, yeah. and I just read this amazing book of Warlight by the guy that wrote The English Patient, and I think it's one of the best things I've ever read. Warlight, the Warlight, the best thing you've ever read. Okay, Michael, Michael, on, on, I don't know, it's a Dutch name, I can't remember, but it's yeah. beautiful. Um, it's been great talking to both of you today, Shailene. I was obsessed with Big Little Lies, that show hit deep. So just thank you for being a part of that experience. I talked about that for You're so very long. lucky to be a part of that experience. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know if we'll ever get more. I don't like, I would love to see those characters again. The story was so beautifully told and the five of you together were perfection. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congrats. Paul McGuire Grimes, KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Felicity, Nabon, it is really great talking to both of you today. I really enjoyed the movie and kind of fell in love with the whole romantic aspect of it all. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, thank you. Now, Felicity, you're one of the producers on the film. Did you learn something different about working uh, behind the scenes on this? And what made you want to get involved creatively? 
Uh, well, it's something that I've found I've been doing through, you know, particularly being leads in films, you, you tend to get quite involved in uh, development and, and then later on with sort of the edit. And so it was just wonderful to be working with, with Augustine and, um, and Pete, uh, one of the producers, and they were very, very open to my input and it made sense from the from the off was was being able to uh, speak to Nick Payne who did the sc screenplay and to really develop that character together and it, and it just shortcuts a process that is sometimes a little bit strange if as an actor you're coming in right at the end of something so it just felt felt very natural and organic oh my god that's great that's awesome uh Nabon, now one of the things I love about Felicity's character is that she's fascinated by this couple and doing all this research and like learning so much. Are there roles that you've taken on where after you started researching it that you have become fascinated in ways that you didn't expect? Um, yeah, uh, I, I think I think back to Mogul Mowgli um, playing a <laughs> playing a rapper uh, and just, you know, seeing how a lot of what we wrote was reflected in the real world. And we thought we created something larger than life often. Um, you know, fiction is, um, or tr truth is, is, is stranger than fiction. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, I like that jacket, by the way. Um, now, Felicity, I read that you got to talk to uh, Joe, Joe, which doesn't always happen with page to screen adaptations. What did you take away from those conversations? Uh, well, Jojo just creates such accessible characters. I think that's what I've always liked about her books and, and also stories that translate so well to film. Uh, somehow her books really lend themselves to, to cinema. And I think she has a really good sense of, of plot. Uh, and so they're often quite straightforward to adapt. I mean, some things were changed, but pretty much the essence of, of, of the book is, is there. And I think she taps into a real modernity as well and, and does, it, but does it in such a lighthearted way. Are there favorite on-screen couples that you guys drew inspiration from? Augustine showed us a scene from Dirty Dancing oh. and I hadn't actually seen the film before so went and watched that and that definitely informed I don't know not not directly but right. kind of tangentially informed some of the 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 feel of of Last Letter. Um, I'm trying to think um, I'm a big fan of Fellini's films mm. so um, I really should remember the actor's names uh, but the, the love story in, in Eight and a Half right. which actually involves um, an affair but just the way they show that is is incredible. What do you think it is about a classic romantic tale that keeps us coming back no matter how many love stories that we either read about or watched on screen? Because we want to love. Right. <laughs> we all want to love. We all, we're all, you know, don't want to admit we're lonely. We all want to be, <laughs> we want to be held, you know? Um, that's, that's what it is. We will, we will love that and crave that even if we're in denial. Oh, deep. I love that. I love hearing that. What's the last great book that you both read that you're just swept away by? A uh, Russian, a Russian novel, um, Twelve Chairs. Uh, it was written by two writers, both journalists. Um, one was 23, one was 29, and they just wrote this incredible novel about people trying to uh, find a um, stash of diamonds that were buried in in a set in in one of Twelve Chairs, and they just, three characters go around all of Russia finding it and it's just the incredible grand plot that's really funny that is fascinating i would not have expected that type of answer or story that is great it's i got the rap signal it's been great talking to both of you today congrats on the film and i hope people just get swept away like i did thanks so much you're all welcome. the best <laughs> paul mcguire grimes kstp minneapolis st paul augustine it's really great talking to you today i really enjoyed the movie and just fell for the the whole romantic nature of it all so thank you Yay, thank you. I'm so glad. Yeah. Now, I read that you and your husband, David, who is a great director himself, spent years writing letter love letters together. How valuable was that and what you brought to this film? And do you think that it's a lost art form? Yeah, it was huge. I mean, that's what drew me to the material, among other things, like these two incredible female leads. But um, but yeah, I had such an intimate connection to the handwritten letter. And 
and it's not just the writing, the writing of it is important and the physical texture of it is important, but there's also just something about pen to paper where it's like a conduit for your heart and, you know, your thoughts and it all just pours out. Um, so yeah, that all came into play. And uh, we tried to stay as close to the letters that were in the book as possible and had Jojo working on new versions of them for the movie and a little tiny side note there are a couple lines that my husband actually wrote that are in the letters <laughs> that I don't know that anybody knows that but like just a couple lines in those love letters that he wrote um that we snuck in so yeah it was amazing I'm excited for his new movie too by the way but we'll talk about that some other day now with Shailene and Felicity as your producers on the film too how different of a set and your job is it when your leading women are collaborators in that sense as well God, it's so much better because like, I mean, it's so much better. I can't imagine any, anything better than that. Like the, I think there's this fall. Well, I don't know. I can't speak for other people's experiences or other people's relationship with talent, but um, I enter into the filmmaking process, hoping for the type of collaboration that we had where they are invested in it beyond just showing up on set and doing, you know, their lines and leaving like these two women were instrumental in script notes and, you know, edits on the film and just all the discussions. And we really felt like a team, a collaborative team coming together to make something that we all like really believed in. Yeah, I, I love hearing that. It just makes the, the work not feel like work then when it's that collaborative. Yeah. Now, this movie is just unabashedly romantic in a very classical sense. What is it about the classic romantic tale that keeps us coming back, no matter how many romances, how many love stories that we've either read about or seen on screen? I think it's that no matter what our other goals are in life and no matter what you know our paths are in life, love and the ability to love whether it be romantic or a friend or for me my cats or you know like it's the feeling of the heartstrings and being able to see that and live that and watch other people experience that it's just it's so special and it's timeless and I feel it's important um and I mean there are a lot of other important things in the world too careers and you know um a million other things but this is something inherent to humanity that I that I feel is important do you have favorite on-screen couples that you drew inspiration from? Yeah, um, I mean, so many. Of course, Dirty Dancing is one of my all-time favorites. Um, uh, Moonlight was such an impressive, it was so heartbreaking and it just kills you. Um, I just cried and cried. Uh, most recently, um, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, and I actually saw that God, I can't remember if we were in the edit when I saw that or if it was late in production, but it just destroyed me. And so, you know, those, but then of course, all the old ones like Brief Encounter and Casablanca and, you know, The Notebook and Notting Hill. Um, God, I just love a good romance. Um, Moonlight is a masterpiece. And yes. I would forever talk about that movie to anyone because I love Barry Jenkins and just what he did with that film is stunning. And um I thought of Richard Curtis, speaking of Notting Hill, I thought of Richard Curtis's movies when watching this. So I think that's great. Like you kind of brought that sensibility in there, whether you were like imagining it or not. What was the last great book that just swept you off your feet? So many um, swept me. Well, I was just saying, I just finished reading The Invisible Life of Abby LaRue, um, which is about this woman who makes a deal with the devil um, to live forever and and he ends up putting a twist on it that kind of makes it a nightmare. But at the same time, I don't know, it's just fantastic. And I mean, that's the most recent thing I've read. I'm in the middle of reading conversations with friends. I just read Lisa Tadeo's new book, Animal. Um, oh, what else? What else? Uh, yeah, a lot. But that's, like, I guess, because that's the most recent thing that just, it's really fantastic. Oh, that's great. Augustine, it was great talking today. Thank you for the, the lovely conversation. I appreciate it. And the movie's really great. Lovely. Thank you. Bye. Welcome back. Paul McGuire Grimes, KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Jojo, it was really great talking to you today. I really enjoyed the movie and just kind of fell with the whole romantic nature of it all and kind of sucked me off my feet. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Now, how involved are you in the adaptations of your work? And do you ever get hesitant when there are changes that are made from one medium to the next? Oh, sure. I mean, I've been lucky enough to be involved with uh, both the English language adaptations that have, have made it to screen so far. And I think the key is just having a really good relationship with the director. 
Um, and I've been lucky enough to work with two directors who understood the material, understood my vision and didn't kind of want to deviate too far from the spirit of the book. I mean, Last Letter has a few changes compared to the book, but I can say with my hand on my heart that I don't miss anything from the book, which isn't always the case. And I also have huge respect for the script scriptwriters who adapted this one because it's a complicated time structure and they've managed to get it onto a screen in a way that I think people will feel it makes sense. It doesn't jump around too much. It's clear what's going on. And I didn't know if that was possible. Oh, no, it's completely clear. I totally got that. No, I think it's great. Now, the art of love letters and kind of long form communication seems so dated nowadays with texts and emojis, which we see in the movie. Are you surprised how much that has even changed since when you wrote the book? Oh, completely. I mean, when I wrote the book, I put an advert in the Daily Telegraph in England asking people to send me examples of the last letter from a lover or the last correspondence with a lover. And there were letters and there were postcards and there were cards and, you know, a scribbled note or a, I think there were a couple of text messages and emails, but it was mostly handwritten. And I remember talking to my cousin who's 10 years younger than me. And by the time she was dating, it was all gone. Like right. there, was, there was nothing but digital communication. And I, I feel sad for people because like I've got a box of old letters, you know, that I can look back at one day when I'm a kind of dried up old crone and go, <laughs> oh, one day somebody loved me. And I don't think you get that from a text message or a 10 year old email. It's just not the same. It's not the same at all. I mean, I, I love kind of, I don't do it a lot, but I do love the long form of communication. I'm not good at emojis by any means yeah. and like even text i'm like full sentence grammar punctuation in my text <laughs> now what so is apparently all these emojis now have kind of codes behind them and i'm terrified i'm going to send someone right. something completely different right. so yeah I, I i am basically techno man my kids right. are yeah. That's hysterical. I mean, no, me too. I know. I, I know the feeling. What do you think it is about the kind of classic romantic tale of that keeps us coming back? No matter how many love stories that we've read or seen on screen, what is about that that just sweeps us off our feet all over again? Because I think love is the great unknowable. If you know people who are in love, you want to understand it. You want to know how did they get there? How do they keep it alive? You know, when people break up, everybody's fascinated. What happened? And part of it is because we're always trying to work it out for ourselves. If you're married, if you're in a relationship, if you're not in a relationship, how do I find love and how do I keep it? It's, it's the age old question. And I mean, to me, the, the, one of the things I really loved listening to more than anything was Esther Perel's podcasts about relationships. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. No. Uh, oh, you basically, you're in a therapist's room listening to marriages and relationships, break up, make up, whatever. I mean, it's fascinating. Don't Nobody can pretend to me they're not interested in other people's <laughs> lives. And oh. it's, it's basically because we want to work it out for ourselves. That's my theory anyway. Oh, yeah. Really yes. Who were your literary inspirations growing up that made you want to be an author? Ooh, okay. You want to hear, it's a little bit unlikely, uh, but um, Walter Farley's The Black Stallion. Ah. Uh -huh. Children's right. book. Yeah. Uh, and you may remember the film by Francis mm -hmm. Ford Coppola, but sometimes as a child, you're left with images in your head that never leave you. And for me, it was the adventure of a, a lone child and a wild horse reliant on each other in a kind of weird landscape. And that has stayed with me throughout my life. I've even written a book in which that was an image. Um, Oh, what else? I don't know. I was a voracious reader. I read everything. My parents let me read everything. I read everything from comic books to the Bible before right. I was born. I just went, I went through everything. They, yeah. they get the full reign of their bookshelves. Um, I think that's great. I, I think people should read anything because uh, you never know what's going to trigger your imagination or what's going to trigger your kid's imagination. Yeah, it's the best thing you can give somebody. Oh, I love that. I love giving books to like our our godson and just other nephews and nieces that we have. I love it. Jojo, it's, I got the rap signal. This has been fabulous. So thank you so much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome.